18th century France. A painter is commissioned to the island of a wealthy aristocratic family to immortalize their youngest daughter in portraiture, only for a forbidden love affair to stoke beneath the surface. The pitch alone is enticing, one that evokes Victorian elegance, Shakespearean romance, and stylistic capability held by a celebrated minimalist and an indie director, Celine Sciamma. Once it was announced, the film would boldly subvert classical romance cinematic norms by featuring LGBTQ plus romance as well. The hype skyrocketed as its debut at the prestigious Festival du Caen quickly approached. Winning the Prix du Scenario, Best Screenplay, this accoladed art house flick astounded the jury and audiences overseas and was ready to odyssey into the lion's den. Historically anti-LGBTQ nations closed mind on what sexuality is, perhaps the biggest of all, yet just so happening to be the movie capital of the world, Hollywood, USA. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is the proverbial work cinema has been waiting generations for, a showpiece so chord-striking, emotionally saturated, poignant, and erotic, it has the potential to set precedence in the hearts of critics, audiences, naysayers, and even the hateful ablaze with amour fou. A brushstroke of pathos, romance, and occularly dazzling baptême de feu amongst the rocky seaside cliffs of 18th century France, Céline Sciamma has delivered a powerful, bewitching, revolutionary can masterpiece, the most breathtaking LGBTQ plus film ever made. Most intriguing about Portrait of a Lady on Fire is its departure from classical technique and the fact that it lacks a norm central to filmmaking, an orchestral score. Almost the entirety of the film lacks any sort of soundtrack whatsoever. The film is silent beyond words and diegetic background noise of a crackling fire or waves crashing. This is a bold, avant-garde innovation by Shyama and Co. that would cripple most filmmakers going against the foundations of textbook cinema, but one that pays off in spades giving the film a singularly unforgettable intimacy and idiosyncrasy unlike anything I can remember of late. As metaphorically as Eloise critiques Marianne's first portrait as too stiff and by the book in painting technique slash idealism, the film itself poses a smiling critique of closed-mindedness and preconception, synergized with its LGBTQ plus roots. POLAF shattered the preconception that there even has to be an orchestra or composer at all. The absence of a soundtrack highlights the film's screenplay ten times over, making every word, syllable, breath, movement, and detail in the rich slash sovereign mise-en-scene shine beyond what's traditionally noticeable on a first viewing, bestowing one-of-a-kind elegance. Chiyama's altruism in reinventing and experimenting with film filmmaking technique is dazzling, saying more with her pauses in the absence of sound than most directors do with it. The two scenes of the film where music is featured thus strike like lightning by sonic contrast, commanding your full attention with breathtaking sequences in their own right. One, the haunting, mysterious Latin choral chant by the bonfire, feeling bewitching and supernatural in clap and dance 4-4 step. And two, the thunderous aggressions of Vivaldi's Four Seasons presto by a full orchestra in the finale. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is one of the most visually striking films of 2019. In a year already stacked with masterpiece-level cinematography displays, from the xenophobic, daylit Swedish hillsides of Midsummer to turquoise Maldivian seascapes of self-discovery for social survival, to chiaroscoric black-and-white New England storms of the lighthouse, to masterpiece one-shot wizardry of WW1 film 1917, Portrait of a Lady on Fire shines all its own. Not only does it deliver one of the most gorgeous backdrops of the year in the idyllic, golden-hued, sea-swept, rocky cliff-fringed, Van Gogh-esque island straight out the annals of lost Impressionist paintings, but it again utilizes brilliant analogy in its sharp justification of sun and light-blasted exteriors with dark interiors. This perhaps symbolizes the infamous closet homosexuals have been historically boxed into by society. When, wherein they're prevented from enjoying the same life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness as others as promised in the Constitution in the metaphorical and physical light by bigotry omnipresent across most nations in the past. Beyond the majesty of the setting and implications of its allegory, 
The cinematography is excellent. Claire Mathieu utilizes crisp lines, innovative tracking shots, dynamic compositions, and cleverly evocative camera work like the mirror between the legs, collarbone slash bosom brush strokes, and graphic match arm to private area shots to incite sexual arousal within and around the film's star-crossed romance. Eloise and Marianne. The performances of Portrait of a Lady on Fire are spellbinding. Noemi Merlant steals the show in what should easily be the frontrunner for Best Supporting Actress at the 92nd Academy Awards. If the Oscars don't bow to pur puritanical dogmatism and fake Christianity justified xeno slash homophobia, which their track record leaves at about a 50-50 chance, update, it wasn't even nominated in any category. Pure disgrace. Anyways, Merlant's saccharine warmth, composed demeanor, elegance, fortitude, and purity of passion make for a screen emblazoning showcase of feminine power that lights up the screen and deserves multiple Oscars. An artist hired for a mysterious job she knows little about but takes to pay the bills in the male dominated 1700s French art scene, her character is taken on a whirlwind tour of emotion and character development when, he, when she meets the mysterious maiden of this rocky peak. Adele Hyenel's gentle, haunted, torn between freedom and convention, Eloise. Their undeniable chemistry bursts from every frame of this passionate, cheek blushed, butterfly airy journey, one of the greatest love stories of all time. A Shakespearean tale of forbidden lamour, of fleeting impermanence, POLAF tells uh, an amazing tale of two star-crossed souls who fought against fate and crossed through metaphorical and physical fire to meet. The, the result impressive even without the consideration of its groundbreaking gender exposition in this genre. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is one of the sexiest films ever made, stoking hot and heavy arousal near constantly, but in such a skillful, tasteful manner it not once borders into the dangerous territory of feeling like a cheap porno or adult triple X film. Instead, it balances objectively advanced such evolved storytelling packed with intellect, symbolism, and character development in something that just happens to be suggestive enough to get the endorphins flowing too. The film is a game-changing step of revolutionism in LGBTQ plus representation beyond anything predating it, popularizing what love can be in all spectrums on screen with such an electricity and magic, it feels sacrilegious to not root for the level not root for the lovers we tragically know cannot be by their time. Of rich intellectualization in the film's Greek mythological backbone, the allegorical tragedy it superimposes on its own. Portrait of a Lady on Fire utilizes the ancient myth of Eurydice and Orpheus as a metaphor for the love and tale of Eloise and Mariana. In the legend, Apollo's son Orpheus is given an enchanted lyre whose melodies are irresistible to man and beast, attracting his, his true love, Eurydice, whom he serenades and, serenades and enjoys blissful marriage with until she dies by snakebite one day. His pain and turmoil, as well as the absence of his music, echo throughout the cosmos, leading him to the underworld, where Hades and Persephone agree to resurrect her if he can make it out of the cave without turning back to gaze at her. Despite these instructions, he cannot bring himself to avoid looking back, and he watches his beloved wife suck back into the, into the underworld for eternity out of faithlessness, impatience, memory versus presence, or some combination of the three. The story shares striking similarity to the portrait of a lady on fires. An artist falls in love with their subject, loses them by cruel fate and sadistic circumstance, and ends up worlds apart forced to live out the remainder of their days in separation. The film even meta-interprets the symbolism itself in part. Sophie argues he looks back out of impatience slash love. Marianne, that Orpheus chose to look back and keep the memory of Eurydice and beauty over a decaying live version of her. And Eloise, that she, t that she told him to look back. This begs into question the poet's parable of what, which is better in the long term. Marianne is Orpheus, Eloise is Eurydice, the liar in this artist's canvas, and the snake slash act of looking back, emblematic of society and fate, and whether to fight it here. 
The myth also reverberates the film's central theme of the power of a gaze, whether it's the absence of a male one, or the symbolic act of what the gesture itself means. Anne delivers a rich philosophical wax aside its romance, climaxing in the multi-interpretive final opera scene, Did She See Her or Not, only outdone by its artistic discourse. Portrait of a Lady on Fire analyzes and takes a critic's pen to the relationship between artist and subject. It might be one of the most avant-garde and original takes ever on the topic. What is the story behind Mona Lisa and her mysterious, age-defying smile that has perplexed historians for centuries? Who was she as a person? What was her connection to Da Vinci? Colleagues? Friends? Lovers? Portrait of a Lady on Fire is fascinated by every detail, brushstroke, and decision a, a painter makes in the mystical, ancient art of taking a blank canvas and inscribing on it a work of beauty. The preparation, process, polished end, polish end result, and everything that happens between and before and after the stages. Celine Sciamma manages to demystify the craft through shots of real-life artist of Helene Delmer's and actually performing the task live, one charcoal sketch line or color grading at a time. An authentic portrayal of painting beyond screen conventions of before after montages, haphazardly slash disinterestedly spliced together. The film establishes the process as just important as the finalized product, a theme that, paraly that parallels its central romance. From afar, the story doesn't seem that passionate, especially if you were to just watch the beginning and end frames of the film alone, like if you see a blank canvas in the final painting. But after seeing the intense escalation and experiences in the middle, it's clear that there is so much more than meets the eye, an entire story is packed behind every detail and decision. This is indeed the power of motion pictures as an art form over its comparatively static pen like painting, literature, music, it fuses elementally into a culmination of the three, why we love cinema here in the first place. POALOF also tackles feminist ideals and on-screen progressivism brilliantly, in a way that not once antagonizes or provokes anyone, something the rest of the cinematic industry needs to see. Classically feminist themes like historical discrimination being excluded from opportunities, having to submit works under male pseudonyms, pseudonyms to gain acceptance in a field, reproductive rights and portrayal and societal norms such expectations and things like body hair are all on display, but handled so expertly so expertly that they are not one to feel forced, inauthentic, or castigatory of others. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is thus a refreshing, delicate, true, important representable empathy trip into the plight of the woman and LGBTQ plus community historically that no sane person should have any objection to, as it paints such a critical piece of empathization. Brilliant. Flaws in POLAF are near limited to its B arc. The Sophie side plot, while very important thematically, showcasing the physiological and psychological hardships of the abortion process historically, is jarring story-wise. It distracts and takes valuable, limited time away from the main story and central romance we want to see, where the film feels far most at home and could have gone a bit further with. Better utilization of this sizable time spent on a bizarre side character in the periphery of the film's events on giving his lovers more time in the sunlight together would have fleshed out the romance more. A glimpse into each other's life post-separation, an idealistic hallucinogen-induced vision of a future life together, or better yet, exploring the, exploring the harrowing and lightly expositioned arc of Eloise's sister. Why did she choose such a ghastly suicidal fate of jumping off the cliffs? Who was she as a character? Was it also because of forced marriage and LGBTQ suppression? How did it affect the family, Eloise, etc.? Overall, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is a master. It feels like we're witnessing something we weren't meant to see. A lost literary worker painted from the 18th century set ablaze for its quote, radical his, uh, homosexual idealisms 
non-complacent with their archaic views of sex and sociological normalcy. Thankfully, society has evolved enough to finally sit down and hear out a story like this, and the result is breathtaking. Celine Shiyama's film is one of the sexiest, most evocative, passionate, thematically complex, rich, and beautiful romance films of the 2010s, and perhaps all time. Also doubling as a smiling critique of closed-mindedness, avant-garde uh, showcase of technique, artist for subject discourse, and game changer for women's directorial opportunities and LGBTQ plus representation on screen. This film, more so than anything else I've ever seen across media and pop culture, should make even the biggest cynic of homosexuality re-examine and introspect in the very depths of their soul. Beyond near perfection by cinematic intangibles, wielded like colors on a palette by a master painter from Baroque or Romanticism classical ages and its directorial force, Portrait of a Lady on Fire is a film that transcends the screen to become one with possibilities to make sweeping changes of progressiveness in real life contexts. A brushstroke of pathos, romance, and visually captivating emotion among the seaside rock cliffs of 18th century France Celine Shiyama has delivered a powerful, revolutionary can masterpiece, the most breathtaking LGBTQ plus film ever made. Official CLC score, 9.5 out of 10. Like this review? Subscribe to our channel for more of the most in-depth film analyses in the world. Thanks for watching and welcome to the club.